Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shorts. Today's subject is Zebrina Mallow, which you see before you. Kind of looks like a geranium, doesn't it? Except it's not. Its scientific name is Malva Silvestris, and in quotation marks Zebrina, which is its variety name. Now, Silvestris means of the woods, or forest, or something similar. And Zebrina means striped, which refers to its flowers, which are pink with a dark, almost purplish striping on it. Very pretty, in fact. This plant is a perennial, but it is not native to the United States. It's actually native to Europe. It is a perennial in zones 4 through 8. It prefers a soil pH of 6.5 through 7. It prefers full sun. It has a nickname, but that applies to all of the Malvaceae group, or the Mallows in specific, cheeses. And that refers to the seed pods, which break off in wedges and roughly resemble a wheel of cheese. I guess cra classical agronomists were pretty darn hungry. I don't know, but they do that a lot. Now, what's interesting about this plant is that it's noted that it can have a maximum height of 2 to 4 feet and a spread of 18 inches to 2 feet. Personally, in the garden, I'd say it's about half that, but that's my personal professional opinion. A little bit of both there. I have yet to see one get above two feet, but that may be with years of subsequent, subsequent growth. Now, what's interesting is this plant is edible, but I have to put a warning out there. Do not feed with nitrogen-rich fertilizer. This plant is known to hyperaccumulate the nitrates in its foliage, which is bad for you when you eat it. However, if you haven't done that, the leaves can be eaten raw or cooked. They're good as a soup thickener because they have mucilage, much like many members of the mallow family. Um, one of the more famous members notorious for this is okra. Additionally, the leaves can be put in salads. I imagine with a decent balsamic vinaigrette bath, you can probably make it pretty darn good. And it's said that they're kind of sweet. The flowers are edible or raw and the leaves dried can be a tea substitute. Now here's the interesting thing, we're getting into the medical part. All parts are used medicinally. They are an antiphlogistic, which means it reduces inflammation. They are an astringent, demulcent, diuretic, emollient, expectorant, laxative, and can be used as a salve. Ooh, baby, that's a lot of stuff. But, not bad. Not bad for weed. Now, this plant, and I'm going to zoom down, I'm going to angle down so you can see the whole thing. Head to tail, the whole darn thing. Well, this plant is interesting in the garden because it is a hibiscus. Hibiscus are mallows. They all fall under the Malvaceae family. The Malvaceae family is a grouping of plants that does not get its due in horticulture. And the other four that I'm covering will reinforce this fact. Now, we already know the two famous ones, right? The two most famous ones are okra and cotton, both mallows, right? The most famous landscaping shrub in the family is the Rose of Sharon, which is Althea, and Althea Syriaca. Du, 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 Syriaca. But anyway, um, you'll see Rose of Sharon all over the place up north, and you can see the big seed pods, which kind of look like wheels of cheese, and that's where the name comes from. But what's interesting is that there are a lot of lot of hibiscus and mallows that we don't think about, like the cotton rose, which is not one of the five I'll be discussing because I don't have a viable specimen in the garden yet. But also, what's most interesting is almost all of the mallows are edible in some part or whole. Some of them are really good forage foods, some of them are not. The plants I'm going to be covering in this series are going to go in detail in, in each individual case, and I think you'll get a kick out of it. Now, why should you grow this particular specimen in your garden? Well, the, band, the foliage resembles old-timey geraniums, so if you can't go grow geraniums, old, old school or otherwise, this might just be your plant. Plus, it's perennial. I mean, perennial. Perennial, perennial. Like, forever, ever. Um... Another reason you should grow this plant is the flowers are outrageous. Go look up Zebrina Mallow. You'll be like, oh my god, Becky, look at her flowers. They're just so striped and out there. Definitely a good reason. 
It's an unusual esoteric upright plant. As you can see, this plant is not mallow. It's a single stem, and I imagine with age you'll get more than one stem. Uh, there's very little that bothers it, though it looks like it's taken some insect damage, though that could be physical damage to the bud, too, or the unfurling leaves. It could be anything. Since the entire plant's edible, if there's a food shortage, which thanks to COVID there almost was, it's a good thing to have around. Its medical uses are well noted. And I should also point out one last fact before I conclude this video. The name Mallow comes from Alethea officinalis, the marshmallow, from which the original marshmallow derived its key ingredient. It's called the marshmallow now, but it used to be called the marshmallow. Now they use corn syrup and other stuff to congeal it, but back then they used, I, they used a mallow to make it happen. So this family has been critical to agriculture and food for a very long time, and it does not get its proper due in any garden video until now. I'm going to leave you with that thought, and as always, folks, keep them growing. Like, subscribe, hit up the blog, and by the way, kids, if you like the jokes, try the fish. Have a nice day.